Hello friends, today we're gonna to talk about how to blend a logo, a graphic, or a piece of text into different textures or clothing here in Photoshop. Now we're gonna first go over a simple method of doing this, and then we're gonna go over a more complex method blending a logo onto a t-shirt with folds and all that type of stuff. Now before we get started, if you're a returning subscriber, let me know what you think about the new lighting setup. I'm testing it out now, I just got a couple new lights, so I'm hoping this makes things look a little bit more professional on the channel. And if you think so, let me know down in the comments below and I would appreciate any feedback. Anyways, let's get into Photoshop. For the first example, we're gonna blend this graphic of the tree onto this wall. And this is the most simple version of doing things because we can use a displacement map to basically get all the little textures of the wall and make it blend nicely into our graphic. Now to do that, it's actually quite simple. First, we just need to click on the image layer and then press Command or Control J to duplicate it. Then I'll just turn this off quickly so we have a good view of the texture and we need to desaturate this so it's completely black and white. To do that just go to image adjustments and then desaturate. This will make your image black and white which can be later used as a displacement map. So with that complete we need to save this as a file by going to file save a copy, and then we're gonna save it as a PSD file. So Photoshop format here, save it wherever you'd like, and then click save. Now we can delete this layer and turn back on our graphic. With our graphic layer selected, it's gonna be useful if this is converted to a smart object so you can make some adjustments if needed. To convert your layer, just right click and go to convert to smart object, and then you'll see this little icon here as I have. Now to add a displacement map, we just need to go to filter, distort, and displace. Here we can set the horizontal and vertical scales to 10. We'll set the displacement map to stretch to fit, repeat edge pixels, and then embed file data in Smart Object and click OK. A window will appear where you can then select the displacement map that you just created, click Open on that, and now if I zoom in, look at what has happened to my graphic. It now has all these cool little textures and things around it that make it look as if it's blending into the wall a little bit more. Now at this point you might be thinking, mm, I don't know, that just doesn't look quite right and I would totally agree with you. So we have one more step that we can do to make this blend in even better and that's using Blend If. So to access Blend If, just double click on your graphic layer and then within the layer style window, you'll see your Blend If. Now what this does is it allows you to control how much of the shadows or the highlights of a specific layer are visible based on other luminance values of other layers. Now that sounds really complicated, but just watch what happens when we move these sliders. If I click and drag this slider up like so, notice how some of the darkest areas begin to disappear. So that's because we are hiding all of this exposure range or this luminance range from our layer. Now we can use this to blend some of these highlights into the wall a little bit more. So since I want to affect the highlights, I'm going to click and drag on this highlight side of the underlying layer blend if. Now it kind of looks a little bit too blocky here. So there's a trick you can do, which is feathering your blend if. So by holding alt or option and clicking on this slider here, it'll split in two and notice how it begins to feather it out. So it softly hides certain areas in the brightest parts of the graphic. Now, if I go to this other slider, I can click and drag that over as well, and that will just make the effect a little bit stronger. So I'm gonna go something like in here. So then we have a really faded look. Now to finish this off, I'm gonna go to my shadows of the underlying layer, and I'm gonna just drag the entire slider up until parts of the wall begin to show through down here in the darkest areas. So that looks pretty good to me right there. I'll click OK. And now you can see if I zoom in how we have a nice blended texture and all of the colors kind of match what you would expect to see in the photo. Now, if you're wanting to do this type of thing with text, it's actually the exact same process. So let me just quickly show you how that works before we get into adding a logo to a t-shirt, which involves a completely unique process because this one won't work. Anyways, just to show you the text example, I'll just create a text layer here and I'll just place it up here on the top of the wall. Now I need to turn this text into a smart object so that I can actually add effects onto the text. So right clicking and going to convert to smart object. Now we can go and apply that same displacement map as before by going to filter, distort and displace. Same settings as before, click okay. Choose the exact same texture displacement map that we saved earlier, click open. 
that will blend in the edges of the text nicely like that to the textures of the wall. And then from there, we can just double click on the text layer to open our layer style. And then within our blend if sliders, we can once again, hold alt or option to feather out parts of the highlights, and then maybe just feather out the shadows as well for even more blended look. So now clicking okay, we now have added a piece of text that has the exact same texture and looks like it was basically stamped onto our wall using a very simple technique with the displacement map and blend if sliders. Now this all seems fine and dandy, but if you tried to do this process over on another photo such as this, where you want to apply your logo, for example, onto a t-shirt, unfortunately it's not going to work because the blend if sliders don't really give you a good result when blending into the folds of fabric and things like that. So in this example, we'll talk about the different method to blend a logo into more complicated pattern such as a t-shirt. So the first thing that we need to do is place our logo against the item that we're going against. So in this case, my t-shirt. So grabbing my move tool by pressing V, I'm just going to scale this down to the general area on the shirt that I'd like it to be. Now I want it to kind of take up his whole chest here, so that's going to be good enough for me. Now I'm going to press Command or Control T, right click, and go to Distort. Now I'll just click on these anchor points here and just move the logo around so that it kind of fits at the same angle as his chest. So now we have our logo at a slight angle, but if I zoom in, you can see how our logo is really sharp and our shirt is sharp, but not as sharp as our logo. So we need to make those things blend together. So first, make sure your layer is converted to a smart object by right clicking, going to convert to smart object. But in this case, mine's already converted. Then we need to add a Gaussian blur by going to filter, blur and Gaussian blur. Now you just wanna add a very slight blur so that it kind of matches the look of the photo or the the area that you're trying to put it on. So I'm just gonna increase this very slightly here and something like that looks pretty good to me. It just softens out the edges a bit, clicking okay. Now, because there's all the folds and things in the fabric, it's not gonna make any sense if the logo is perfectly straight across the whole shirt. So to fix that, we're going to add a liquify adjustment onto this logo to sort of bend it around some of the folds in the fabric. So with our graphic layer selected, I'm gonna to go to filter, and then down here to liquify. Now in the window that appears, make sure to click the show backdrop option and then set the layer to the background layer, which should be your image. Then set the mode to behind and you'll be ready to go. So now with the forward warp tool selected, I'm just gonna zoom in here. And now we just wanna push and pull the logo depending on how the fabric is folding. So for example, in this area here, it's kind of folding upwards. So I'm gonna try to bend the logo down a bit like so and then it folds outwards here. So I'm going to push out the logo and pull it in over here. And I'm just clicking and dragging to do this. The liquify tool is super simple to use and you just gotta pretty much click and drag and it takes a little bit of practice here to get the hang of things. You can go between using a smaller brush or a larger brush and you can still use the bracket keys on your keyboard just like the regular brush tool in the main Photoshop workspace. So I'm just gonna fast forward through this process and then meet you when it's done. Now that my liquify adjustments are complete, I'll click OK. Looking at that before and after, you can see how it just helps to make the logo look a little bit more blended and now we're set up well to do our main adjustments. Now the problem with blend if in this case is that the shadows and the highlights don't really blend perfectly for a t-shirt. So instead we need to use a luminance mask, which sounds complicated, but I promise you it's really easy to do. So to create a luminance mask, we're just going to turn off our image or graphic layer. Then we're going to go to our channels tab and then we'll hold the command or control key and click on the RGB channel to create a selection of it. Now that's going to create a selection of all the highlights essentially in the photo. Then we can go back to our graphics layer, turn it back on, and then click on the layer mask icon to apply that selection as a mask. Now, as you can see here, if I view this mask, Everything that is white is 100% visible, while everything that is black is 100% transparent. So currently that means the highlights here are gonna be more visible than the shadows, which is the opposite of what we want for right now. So with that layer mask selected, I'm gonna press Command or Control I to invert it, and now our logo is gonna be more visible in the shadows rather than the highlights. Now obviously this looks a little bit too faded, and it's probably gonna be the case when you're doing it as well. So we can go and edit the contrast of the layer mask using a curves adjustment. So with this layer mask selected, we're gonna go up here to image, adjustments, and curves. 
So this will add a curves adjustment to the layer mask and not the graphic itself. Now we can start to play around with the highlights and the shadows to fine tune how our graphic is blended into the t-shirt. So I'm gonna start in the highlights here. I'm gonna move this slider over and notice how the shadows become a lot darker. So I'm gonna to continue to darken this until you kind of reach an area for something that makes sense for your particular shirt or texture or whatever you're trying to blend into. So for me, this looks about right. And then in the shadows range, I'm gonna drag this up a bit so it becomes a little less visible in the highlights. Now I'll click OK to commit to those changes. Looking at our layer mask, you can see how it's completely changed and that added contrast has helped to reveal our logo more in the shadows than the highlights. Now the next step is to reveal some of the highlights because obviously this is way too faded right now. But first, before I do that, I was thinking maybe this color would be better off if it were like a green or something like that. So I'm gonna double click on my layer to open the layer style. I'll click on color overlay. And then I'll just set the color to like a dark green here. That looks good to me there. Click OK, click OK. So now with the updated color, we can go and do the rest of the steps here. Pressing Command or Control J on that layer to duplicate it. We now want to basically do the same thing as before, but now for the highlights, which means we need to invert this layer mask. So clicking on that layer mask and pressing Command or Control I, we will now be affecting the highlights way more than the shadows. And that's why our logo has changed. But we can once again go and edit that contrast with that layer mask selected. Just go up to Image, Adjustments, and Curves. Now I can click on the shadows and just drag this up a little bit to still reveal some of the details from the shirt underneath. And then I'll go to the highlights and this will just darken down some of the color in the highlights. So the logo just looks a little more rich and clear, I suppose. Now, at this point, you may be happy with your effect, but one final thing you can do is duplicate each of your layers and adjust the opacity to make things pop a little bit more in your colors. So I'll press Command or Control J on my shadow layer to create a shadow copy layer. And I'll just go to the opacity and I'll drag this down to zero and I'll just work my way back up and it will just make the logo a little bit more colorful than before. I'll do the same thing on the highlights, pressing Command or Control J to duplicate that, setting my opacity to 0%. And I'll just drag this up slightly like so. And now we have a little bit of a nicer color going on there. And now we have successfully added our logo onto our t-shirt. And the same process would apply if using text, but since this one was a little bit more involved, we're just gonna stick with the logo for today's tutorial. Now, if you're starting to feel a little more confident about adding text and graphics to different textures in your photos, make sure to hit that like button down below and leave a comment letting me know something that you learned in this tutorial. If you have any new tutorial ideas that you'd love to see from me, let me know down down below as well. I'm always open to new ideas and I'd love to hear what you guys think. Anyways, my name is Brendan from bewillcreative.com and I will catch you back here next time for another new tutorial. See you then.